and my name is Lance Dean and today I want to ask you a question let's say that you want to tie a fly and the recipe calls for a particular hook and you don't have that particular hook well there's a way you can compensate for that and adjust for that um, let's take use the copper john as an example the Opera john uses a 2xl hook it's a TMC 5262 it's a 2xl extra long hook and the 2xl means it's two eye lengths longer than a standard hook in the TMC uh, what TMC excuse me yes what TMC consider Timco considers a standard hook shank so um, let's say I don't have any of those so what I can do is I can take a guesstimate or I can see if I can find a another fly that used that hook and I can compare hook shanks and in this example I happen to find a fire hole 633 um, it's a nymph wet hook it's a 1XL a 2 extra heavy hook and this one happens to line up with a size 14 TMC 5262. So if I wanted to tie that in a size 14, I could use a size 12, just go up a size because of the the uh, shank length is going to be uh, adjusted for. Um, there are some advantages to this, and there are some disadvantages to doing it this way. Um, one of the advantages is because it's a bigger hook, it's a size 12 or a 14, you're going to have a wider hook gap. Uh, another a disadvantage would be that the hook gap's bigger, so therefore the hook's bigger. Um, so it just kind of pros and cons to both. You just have to kind of outweigh them and see what you want to do. Uh, so, but anyway, so what I've got in the vise is, like I said, is a fire hole three six. Uh, excuse me, six three three. It's a size twelve. I'm going si to tie it in the proportions of a size fourteen. Copper John. Um, so I've got a a uh, seven sixty four inch tungsten bead. This is a, a gritty tungsten bead. Um, I think they they kind of give it a little bit different unique look to them. Um, tie this one in orange obviously and I'm going to take some 015 lead wire and I'm going to wrap do 13 wraps of thread uh, excuse me, wraps of lead around the hook shank. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, I'm just going to twist this, it's 10 11, 12, 13, it's going to be right about, right about there. What I did when I broke that lead wire there and I still had the tag end here, I just twisted the lead wire and it would wrap the bead around the hook shank. So that's one thing you, that you can do to a, if that happens to you. Um, for thread, I'm actually going to use some rust brown in uh, 6 aught, and it's a unithread. And I'll go ahead and start that behind the hook eye, I mean behind the lead. And like I said, this is going to be not, this is going to be a variation of a Copper John. So instead of using bites, I'm going to use pheasant tail fibers. I'm going to grab, I don't know, it's like eight, ten of them, and pull them off the the stem of the, feather, the tail feather, put them together, and they're going to be about half a shank long. See, that's a full shank, so we want to go half a shank, so about right there. And we will take and we'll just go ahead and tie those down. Now, something else I'm doing is I'm putting pressure on the far side of the hook and pushing it towards me. It'll help keep the feathers, the tail feathers, from rolling around the hook. Okay, and when I get to the to uh, about the point of the lead wire, I'll go ahead and cut those fibers, and then I'm going to tie in some uh, lead wire. Since I'm tying this in portions of a size 14, I'm using some brassy ultra wire. Uh, I'm going to use go ahead and use hot orange. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty bright fly, uh, but uh, for some of those days, it might it'll it'll be effective when well, it could be effective when there's just nothing else going on, or when it's just one of those days when fish are looking for something different. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. I'll start wrapping the lead wire and start building up a, a minor taper here. And I know normally you tie a copper john with UTC because it keeps the thread flat and you know you probably should. I didn't have any UTC uh, in, in this color of orange. So I'm using unit thread. 
so it might be a little bit different, but it, that's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and half hitch that, put it on my cock, bobbin cradle, and I'll start wrapping this wire around the hook shank. And like I said in my other Copper John videos, this first wrap, once you get it around, is, is good. And then when after you start wrapping it around, and you start trying to get the wraps to touch each other, if you hold the wire back towards the tail of the fly, just a little bit, those wraps will roll off the previous wrap. And that's a good way to help keep them, uh, the wire wraps touching each other. I'm going to keep grabbing that to about the 80% point of the hook or so, and then I'll uh, go ahead and tie that off. I'm going to put a stop on the wire real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. Okay, and then uh, now I'm going to go ahead and tie in the thin skin. And I've got a I tie, got this piece cut. And it's about a sixteenth of an inch wide, and then I'll fold it over, and I'll tie it down. And try to keep that on the top of the hook, and then I'm going to tie in some. Oh, I did that in the wrong order. Let's back up. Let's do this again. I need some flashy boo first. So we'll take the flashy boo. And we'll wrap that in. Finger adjusted correctly and I can adjust it. It's on top of the fly. Cinch it down. I'm just going to pull it until it gets the, I don't want it, until the, the tag end's gone. And now I'm going to tie in the thin skin. Okay, and I'm going to tie that back in until it's roughly about a third of the hook shank back. And then we'll uh, tie that, get that secured. And I'm going to take some peacock curl. I've got four strands here. Line up the tips or trim them up so they're lined up, however you want to do it. And then we're going to go ahead and tie them in like so. And then I'm going to let my thread hang there and I'll go ahead and wrap the peacock curl around the fly. And then I'm going to tie it off. Okay, do a couple wraps, do a secure back wrap, and then we'll carefully cut the peacock curl without cutting our thread. If you look, I've got the thread going off the front of my finger, and I'm going to come in from my side and go ahead and trim that. It kind of helps protect the thread as you're cutting. And then at this point, I'm going to take some more pheasant tail fibers, about a dozen or so. Yeah, maybe about a dozen, maybe about ten again. And we're going to use these for the legs instead of hen saddle. And these are, again, these are orange ones, orange pheasant tail fibers. And I'm going to go back roughly just past the thorax there. And then we will. Cinch those down. Which I don't, that's not quite where I want it. So I'm try that again. Okay, I'm pinching the fly. 
I got my wrap in there, and then I'm going to go to the other side. Do the same thing. About ten of them, and the lamp fibers, and we'll put it down and try to put it in there where the same place where we got the other legs. Okay, put another secure wrap on it, and then we'll bring our thin skin over. Actually, no, I gotta cut those legs first. So we'll go ahead and cut the legs. Again, careful not to cut our thread. Okay, now I'll pull the thin skin over. Secure that down. Make sure it's on top of the fly, centered with the top of the fly. Right there. There we are, right there. And then I'll bring the flash of over. We'll do the same thing. Make sure it's centered. Hold it down there. I'm going to hold it down. My kind of cinch it down there. My fingernail. I'll bring it around. And then do pull them both forward. And do one wrap in front. And then go ahead and cut those. Careful not to cut our thread. Okay. Once we are to that stage, put a couple more wraps in there, and then because this is a, um, a thicker thread, I'm going to go ahead and wet finish from here. It'll add some bulk, and if I go put too many wraps in there, it'll add too much bulk. So we'll put a couple wraps, do a three turn whip finish, tighten it down, do one more three turn whip finish. Tighten it down, cut the thread, and now I'm going to take some UV glue, and this type I'm using right now is Pure Cure Goo, I don't think they make it anymore, I mean it's thick, I don't even know if you can find it, um, I'm sure you can somewhere, but um, I'm going to put this onto a piece of cardboard here, just need a little bit, just one fly, usually I tie a bunch of them at once and then you can do do them all at once, but seeing as how this is a demonstration, it's just one fly. And then I'm gonna take some a bodkin. I'm gonna put that, apply that to the bodkin, pick some up, and go ahead and coat that wing case with the ever prominent here glue back. And there we go. Now I'll take my light. Shine that down there, go back and forth. Okay, and because this is the thick stuff, you need to apply it again, apply another coat of something on it, whether it's uh, high, Kierkegaard Hydro or nail, Sally Hands as hard as nails, but another coat of something should go on it to keep it from being sticky. Blast of the light, and that is that. That is a variation of a copper john with a hook that um, if I tie it on a fire hole, 633, and am demonstrating how you can make adjustments to uh, your hook, the hook you're using to tie the fly you want, and don't have to spend a ton of money on hooks. You can buy it generally buy a set, certain set of hooks and just make the adjustments. As needed. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching this uh, demonstration. Uh, please remember to like this this uh, video and to subscribe to my channel. Uh, we're growing, and we're about to reach a thousand. As of this recording, I mentioned as I get it posted, it'll be past a thousand subscribers. And I really appreciate all the feedback and the likes. And thank you again. Hello. Here, I just want to demonstrate the. Uh, size proportions of a size 12 six a fire hole 633 and a t size 14 um, t 
TM, size 14 TMC 5262. If you look, let me have to put it the other way so you can line up the eyes. If we line up the eyes, you got the shank length and it's almost the same exact length. And that's how you can make the adjustment of, uh, if you don't have the exact hook, you can just adjust the hook size to whatever it is you're trying to tie or the proportions. So anyway, thank you. Thanks again.